When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to Metro PCS. Stop by Metro PCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require reporting of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. This is Define You Radio with Valencia Griffin Wallace. Classes in session tonight with Kay Sanders. Are you ready to unapologetically unleash your bold and define your life, money, and business? Define You Radio class is in session with host the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace, brings you the stories behind the glory. Class is now in session. Hey guys, welcome again to Define You Radio. I'm your host, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Well, thank you for joining me for part two of the interview with Kay Sanders. Now, in case you didn't catch part one, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about Kay. She is a nationally recognized business coach, consultant, and best-selling author. She used her experiences and struggles to inspire others to make a difference. She's passionate about helping coaches, consultants, and professionals grow their businesses by using the right systems and strategies where they can have a profitable business on autopilot. She's been featured on CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, and other media, including Define You Radio. So here's Kay sharing her story of strategy to success. In part one, she shared her story of struggle to strategy. Now let's get on with part two and welcome Kay to the show. I know as listeners listened to part one, they heard about your backstory and your backstory played a part in who you are today. So kind of touching on a, a few things here. What mindset made you say, okay, I understand this happened. I'm going to start a business. What, what mindset did you go into that with? Uh, well, when I first got here, um, I mean, I had my own business back in Germany, and I, I wanted to have my own business here again because uh, my ex at that point, he didn't really pay a lot, and, you know, I just wanted to have that extra income and then eventually, you know, turn or turn that into a full-time, you know, stay at work from home kind of uh, business so I can stay home with my with my son. So I had the idea of, you know, I wanted to do something again and I actually started out as a network marketing that just really didn't work out for me until I learned about coaching in 2012. So my mindset was really, I knew there was more to life. I knew I wanted to be successful. I knew I wanted to be my own boss so I don't have to worry about, you know, asking for time off, asking for a pay raise that I never got. And, you know, and I wanted to be independent because when you, when you work your own business, you really don't have an income cap. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. You can work with as many people. So I, that, my mindset was I wanted freedom. I wanted the personal freedom and the financial freedom that comes with being an entrepreneur. And so that's really why I got into it, you know, because I was, you know, looking for that freedom. Do you, do you think it's harder for women as single parents to put the personal issues aside and go ahead and start a business? For a single person in general, it is very hard because as a single as a single parent, you have to make sure you, you you bring in food. You know, I mean, you have to pay all your bills. You know, especially like let's say for me, I didn't have the support from my ex-husband. He never he's one of those deadbeat dads, never pay child support. So I had to make sure that my job, you know, pays enough so I can you know sustain my my lifestyle, so I can pay my bills to support me and my son. But then at the same time, I also had to do the dishes, clean the house, go grocery shopping, take care of my son. I mean, when I first, you know, got here, I mean, my son was two at that time. And then when I was, you know, so he was always like, he was little when I started with the whole business stuff. 
And then, but then you also have, so you have to make sure you have, you, all your bills are paid. You know, you have money for your business. You need to work a full-time job. You're a full-time parent, and you want to build your business. So, I mean, my social life is like non-existing, <laughs> or it was very non-existing <laughs> for a very long time. So now I'm just so used to it. So now whenever I don't work, I'm just like, you know what? I don't want to do anything. I just want to relax. So I'm cool with that. I, I'm cool with not having a social life for right now. But I do think for a single person or single parent, it is very, very, very hard because you do have that ki- the, the kids to take care of while you're working and while you're trying to build your business. You are really a great example because I know a lot of women who are single parents and that is, they use it, I don't want to say they use it, but that's one of the things that I hear often is I can't because instead of trying to find a way. And that's one of the things that I love and admire about you because found a way to get it done. So when I talk about get it done, what exactly is it? What do you do as a business? Okay, well, I'm a business coach and consultant. I got into the industry initially. I started as a holistic life coach back in 2012 when uh, I shared in the previous episode that um, I was working in a PTSD treatment facility, and that's when I learned a lot, a lot about my own struggles, and I really educated myself about holistic modalities. And my goal was I wanted to work with veterans who suffer from PTSD. The only challenge I had was I had no idea how to actually coach someone and how to build a business until I actually got certified as a coach in 2015. I started school in 2014, yeah. Got certified in 2015, and then I realized that the technical aspects is more my area of expertise. That's really what, you know, what, that's my zone of genius, like uh, Gay Hendricks calls it. Um, like, I had gotten, I, I was in school, I mean, I was working on my master's, I mean, on my um, bachelor in IT, and then now I'm actually working on my master's in digital marketing. So it was always the, the technical aspects that really got me going. I mean, I got my, I've been doing web and graphic design for, I think, like 10 years now. That's actually the first thing I did thought, hey, I can get a certificate, get a good job here. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But um, it's really like I work with other entrepreneurs to really grow their business because oftentimes it's like they get stuck with, okay, now how do I grow a business? How do I get clients? How do I, how do, I do that? So uh, that's where I come in. I really help them. I take them by the hand. I even help people to start a coaching business. Like I had written a book on how to start a coaching business. And then I take them from, you know, they want to start a business to starting the business, to growing the business, to making the business successful. So that's basically what I do. So you hit all, basically all three of the main points of what businessmen and women are looking to do. And I love that you um, help with the right systems and strategies because I know a lot of times and a lot of people, we just, we, I say we because I'm including me in this number, <laughs> we we start and, we, and we're and we like we will put the strategy in place later, which leads to a lot of, a lot of headache. So what do you think is more important, getting, getting the strategy in place, then starting or starting and then the strategy? Well, you have to have somewhat of a strategy to get started so you know what you need to do because you can't just, you know, start and not knowing how to move forward, how do you get clients. So you need to have somewhat of a strategy. I'm not saying like a full-blown strategy, but you need to know somewhat, okay, now you're having a business, now you're starting, so now what? What's the next step? How do I really go out and get clients? Because I mean, it would be nice, but, you know, just because you have a, have a business, just because you're opening your doors doesn't mean that people come to you. I mean, it would be beautiful if that would happen, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way. And oftentimes, you know, like every time when I talk with a client, I'm like, well, how many sales conversations do you have each week? Or how many outreaches do you make each week? Well, mm, none. I'm like, well, you know, if no one knows who you are, no one, is, no one can come to you because you're basically this hidden gem, like no one knows who you are. So you need to have some strategy in place or, you know, like, like a step-by-step kind of approach, like, okay, now what? How do I get the clients? And then once you have something going, then, yes, you know, build up the strategy, build up the systems because in order to have a really good uh, business, a successful business, 
you need to have systems and strategies in place. I mean, just think about any of your uh, your gurus that you're following, any of those you know those experts. Like let's say um, Tony Robbins, for example. He has st systems in place. Like he has lead generation systems in place. He has all these things in place. Or well, maybe Tony Robbins is a little bit too high up there. But you know, just <laughs> any other. Uh, expert that you can think of right now, they have systems in place to make everything like automate the processes. Because if you think about it, like building, a, like growing a business or working in the business, I mean, how many hats do you have to wear? You have to do the accounting, you have to do the bookkeeping, you have to do the marketing, the sales, the uh, client, uh, 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 you know, taking care of your clients. You have to, you have to do all these different things. So if you have to do everything manually, I mean, how much time do you actually have? to work with clients, to do what you, why you started a business. I mean, I'm a business coach. My goal is I want to work with people. But if I don't have those systems and strategies in place, I'm going to spend 80% on, on my business, you know, all that back-end stuff, the marketing, the outreach, and all these things, and only 20% actually working with people. And it, it gets kind of boring and, you know, exhausting at times, so you want to really shift it around. You want to have those systems and strategies in place to automate your process, to automate your lead generation, your sales, your, you know, getting the clients and all of those things, you know, so you can have 80% working with clients and 20% on all the back end boring stuff, but it's necessary. So that's why it's so important to really have all that in place. Everything you just hit on, I feel like, number one, you just put me in the corner. That's what I've been calling it lately as I do interviews and everything, but I know one of one of the goals or one of one of my goals and something that's actually on my vision board is to get my business more automated, more streamlined, more where I'm not feeling like I'm always working on something. And I read this quote, I don't remember who, who it was from, but it says something about make sure you're working towards something instead of on something. And I, mm -hmm. and I love that because I feel like I'm constantly working on something. I know what I'm working towards, but I feel like I'm constantly working on something. So what mm -hmm. what would you advise me or what because I think most entrepreneurs which me and that word fight every episode you guys know that it's not my favorite word because I have a hard time pronouncing it so uh but business women and men what would you advise them to do if they are constantly working on versus toward well, I mean, I just want to kind of like just put that out there. I mean, the first couple of years of being in business, you're going to be working on a lot of things to get, you know, get off the ground, to really get your business to where you want to be so you can start working, you know, towards something. Uh, so, you know, the first couple of years is really you have to build up your name. You have to, you know, do all these different things. But, you know, my suggestion is to everyone, you have to have multiple streams of income. Uh, and that can be – so for you, for example, um, you know, you can – use the, the interviews, for example, and turn it into an online course. Or you can create an online course about, you know, whatever you're doing. And, uh, or, you know, those online products. I mean, you know, digital products nowadays, I mean, that's like really the way to go because you have that passive income. I mean, of course, you know, that you might not be able to do that right out the get-go, but you, that's also one of those, you know, systems that you want to have in place that where you have money coming in so you can take some time off. So, I mean, a lot of my clients are coaches, so I really like to help them in, you know, creating that, you know, steady stream of income with, uh, you know, having an effective product launch and you creating the product and then launching it. And, I mean, you can have, you know, with an effective product launch, you can make six figures if you're doing it right. You know, so that is a nice little cushion. And then once you really have that cash flow going, then outsource stuff because that will free up a lot of time. And, uh, you know, then you can also focus on the things that you enjoy more rather than on the things that you really dread. Like, I me, mean, I hate the accounting stuff, so all I do is I just stick it in a shoebox. No, I actually have a nice little folder uh, divided by month. But, you know, I can focus, I can outsource that to someone that is, first of all, better in doing it and actually like doing that because I really don't. But when you have that, you know, the financial, you know, the, the, the financial resource, then you want to outsource stuff because, like I said, that really frees up time to do the things that you want. Another thing is, like, what I see a lot of people do is they try to figure things out themselves. Uh, for example, like I know in my industry, I focus a lot on the technical aspects like creating landing pages, webinars, virtual summits, yada, yada, yada. 
So a lot of people, they try to create their own website. Um, they create their own landing page. They create all of their own things, but they don't really know how to do it effectively. And then that can actually hurt them more than it does them any good. And it also takes more time. So I mean, think about it. If you have to learn something first, how much time are you going to waste on learning and how much money are you actually going to be losing out because the time that you're wasting or spending on learning something is taking you away from actually working with clients or you know, you know, making the sales or whatever else your, your, your listeners are doing. So even for you, you know, if you're trying to learn how to, let's say, create an online course and how to put it online, how much time is it going to take you to learn how to do it instead of you know, investing that money, for which is probably a lot less, to someone that can do it for you more effectively, a lot faster, and that frees up your time so you can still work with your clients and uh, you're, you're not losing out on that money. So that's another thing, you know, that will definitely like outsourcing a lot of your things and, you know, really sticking to the things that you're really good at and, you know, you know not focusing on things you know, like learning everything. I mean, of course, you should have some kind of knowledge about certain things, but if it's something that you really have no idea about and you have to really start from, from ground zero, I would really suggest outsource that. I mean, make the investment to have someone create your website for you, create those different things for you, create your autoresponder or funnels or whatever then you trying to figure out yourself because then also you run into the problem is, well, yeah, you have it in place, but it's not effective. It's not giving you anything. So you, first you wasted all your time, then you wasted all your money on you know, doing that, and then you're not getting the ROI that you were looking for. So I would su suggest that really you know, find someone that can do it for you. And I second that because I can definitely attest to the time that it takes to learn and implement and things – not being effective, but, you know, I've wasted, and I know a lot of people have wasted a lot of time, and sometimes it's just best to take the money and get it d not only done, but done effectively and efficiently in the way that's going to have the most pow, I guess, the most bang for your buck or mm -hmm. the best ROI, return on investment. So I I'm glad you hit on, on those points. Because I know a lot of, especially, you know, solo business owners or, you know, like I say, a one queen show, we try to do everything and, and learn it. And sometimes it's best just to find the money and invest it. And it'll save people. I know I've had a lot of 2.30 a.m. and 5 a.m. mornings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, you know, I, I, that I don't do because I definitely need my sleep because you do not want to be around me when I don't get my, much sleep or if I don't get my coffee, you do not want to be around me. It's like zombie time for me. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that because I actually have a shirt and I posted it on Instagram last week and I think Facebook too, but the shirt says because coffee. And I, and I said <laughs> anything before 12 o'clock this is the explanation to basically what response you get because coffee, either I didn't have it, I didn't have enough, one of the two, either way it go, it's definitely because coffee. So <laughs> when you, when you think yeah, about, I know I, right, I, I have to have that extra sometimes, especially if it was yep. a two thirty. A two thirty morning. When we think about, because I hear how passionate you are, and because I know your backstory, and if listeners listen to part one, they know your backstory too. Do you think it's harder to take something you're passionate about and turn it into a business than something you're not passionate about and turn it into a business? No, that second one wouldn't work because then it's just going to turn into another job that you're going to end up hating and you're going to fail and you're going to give up and you're going to be disappointed because you failed. So any business you start, you have to be passionate about it because, I mean, you're going to have those. I mean, like you said, you just, you just said it. Sometimes you're up until 2.30 in the morning. Uh, if, you would be, if you would do something you're not passionate about, would you stay up until 2.30? Probably not, right? And no. it's like you cannot – turn anything that you're pa not passionate about into something that you want to do. Because then also, if you think about it, uh, like me, I'm a coach. I need to sell my coaching. Well I'm, well, I'm selling the transformation, not the coaching. But 
but I'm not passionate about what I do. I mean, how would that be? Uh, well, you know, I'm selling my coaching. You really need to work with me because I can help you. Not going to work because there's no passion there. But if I tell you, look, I can help you turn your business around. I can help you make, you know, really good money so you can quit your job. You can hear my passion. People are going to be like, you know what, you're my coach. I want to work with you. But if, if I'm not passionate about it, first of all, I'm not going to be doing the work. I'm not going to be you know, really sitting here, you know, day in and day out for for almost. Yeah, I do need my sleep. I work like Monday through Saturday. And I actually used to work Sundays too, but I really made a half to that day recharge. But sometimes I do just training on that day. And if you're not passionate about it, I mean, if you go to a job that you hate, do you think about that job after you get home other than maybe negative? No. So that's why you cannot build a business around something that you're not passionate about. But if you're passionate about it, it's going to be the best thing because you're going to get up in the morning. You're going to know you're doing something that you're extremely passionate about. You found your passion. You found your purpose. And it's going to make your day even better. And if you actually you don't get paid for doing something that you love to do, hey, that's better. That's even, even more better. <laughs> I, that's a win-win coaches and authors and speakers and so on, just people in business in general, I see a lot of times where they just give up and and start doing something else because it's easier. Do you think that's because they're not passionate or they just, I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? I don't. I wouldn't say that they're not passionate about it. They just gave up hope because they failed so many times. And instead of learning out of their failure or investing in, let's say, working with another coach that can really help them move forward, they give up. And believe me, I had that moment too one time, you know, where I was close to getting a job again until I realized I had a really good cl- uh, call with a client of mine that day. And I'm like, look, this is my passion. This is what I'm meant to do. I, I cannot give up. But I think – especially like new coaches, um, they start, they don't really know. I mean, they're fresh out of coaching school. First way in the coaching school, they don't, they're not being taught how to actually build your business. Because it's not just going to your friends and family asking for, you know, a coaching session. And it's really you need to, you know, sell the transformation. And if you don't really know how to sell your services, how to really go out there and get the clients, you're not going to get the clients because they're not just going to come to you. Because coaching, usually with coaches, we charge a good amount. Because we do deliver transformation. We don't just, you know, sell a little product. We do tr- deliver transformation. And if you, don't, if you don't know how to, you know, bring your message across, that's why they give up because they don't know. They, they don't know how to grow their business. They charge way too little, and then they're not going to move forward. And they're like, well, I give up because it's not working. Maybe it was meant to be. Instead of looking at it, well, what lesson can I learn from that? And that's one thing that I learned from my coach not too long ago, and it really opened my eyes. Every situation in life, everything that happens to you doesn't happen to you. It actually happens for you because there's a lesson to learn in everything that happens in life. And you can either look at it from the naked or like, oh, my God, this is not working. I give up. Or you can look at it hmm, this is not working. What can I learn from this lesson? What do I need to do? Maybe I need to learn more sales or maybe I need to work the coach. Maybe what can I learn from this lesson? Like I just learned my lesson last year because I had a little, hit a little rock bottom with my business because I had lost a lot of clients. I didn't make enough money. I had too many bills. And I'm like, well, maybe I really need to get a job. And it was really, you know, one thing after another happened. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, what is going on? And it was like I, see, I saw it as like the universe was testing me to really see if this is really what I wanted to do. And then I remember that one day I was driving. I'm like, look, universe, I'm sick and tired of this, the, the, the run that I'm in right now. I am. This is my purpose. This is what I'm meant to do. So just give me the clients. Bring me the clients, you know. And, you know, I, I saw that as a lesson learned. So I didn't let it pull me down and say, oh, you know, screw that, I'm giving up because, you know, I lost clients and it's not working. No, I, it really reaffirmed that I am meant to do what I'm doing right now. So anyone that's listening, you know, really look at it like any situation that you're in, don't look at it as a failure or it's not working. Look at it like, what can you learn out of this, this lesson, out of this challenge? What can you make better? And then go for it. Don't give up because I believe that, I mean, entre- being an entrepreneur is the best thing that you can do in life because you have that financial and uh, personal freedom. I mean, wh- what better is there to, than to be your own boss and do whatever you want and really get paid for what you're passionate about? So don't give up. Don't ever give up. That's, that's really what I believe in. Don't, don't give up. 
And those are the type of people you you help. Do people generally come to you like right at their wit's end or do you find yourself with more clients that's just starting off? Uh, it's a little bit of both. I mean, my ideal client is really coaches within the fi- first five years of being in business because they are the ones that really, really need that help because, I mean, we have a gift. I mean, who are we not to go out there and share our gift? But, I mean, oftentimes it's really that they simply don't know, and I really I want to help them because I wish someone would have taken me by the hand initially and really help me move forward. I mean, I've worked with coaches before, but unfortunately I've worked with a lot of bad coaches before. But um, so right now, I mean, a lot of the clients that come to me that you were either, either burned by bad coaches before, so they're a little, little uh, you know, they're not going to jump right on the opportunity or they're really, you know, unfortunately a lot of them, they don't really have the money. But I also have some, you know, like they're really right, right away. They're like, yes, I want to work with you. I want to make this, uh, make this happen. Um, who really want to take the business to that level. I mean, these are like my, my, that's my ideal client right there, those who really want to make stuff happen because they really, you know what, I can really help them move forward. It's not just like, let's, you know, play around a little bit, but I, they do get really great transformation with, you know, working with me, and they see that. So they really start up uh, with me right away, basically. You're awesome. I just want to say that. And I, I love that you help people who who are where you've been. So it's you understand that frustration. You understand the process, and you also understand what needs to be done. So it's almost like even though it's your passion and it's your business, you kind of have that been there, done that, and this is how what I've learned and what I've done, and now I'm going to teach you. So you have that very uh, give back, quality in your business. Now, if someone wants to work with you, how can what do they need to do? How how can we start to work with K? Um, well, the easiest way is um, it's they can go to my website. There's a little tab that says work with me, and on the bottom is consultation. They can just fill out the, comp- uh, the, the questionnaire that I have on there. After they hit, uh, submit for the questionnaire, they will be taken to my – they will be able to set them, uh, put them actually on my calendar so they can set up an appointment right there and then. So it's, it's very easy. That's, you know, or that's another great example for an automated process so they don't actually have to, like, reach out to me. We have to figure out the time. They can just directly go to my website click on the work with me, click on uh, consultation, fill out the questionnaire because the questionnaire will also help me help them better. Because during my initial consultation, I don't just ask a bunch of fluffy questions. I actually help them create a little plan of actionable steps that they can do to actually help them move forward. So I like to really provide them with a lot of value, even in my initial session, so they can see, you know, they can experience how it is to work with me, and so they can already see that, hey, you know what, I can really help them. Uh, but, yeah, once they, they uh, fill out the questionnaire, and like I said, they will be taken to my online calendar. They can put themselves on my calendar, and boom, that's, that's basically how it works. It's very easy peasy, very uh, convenient for both parties, basically. And you guys see exactly what she said about automating and the strategy and everything else. It's like she said, boom, it's there, it's done. And the website is ksanders.com? Yeah, if anyone is not ready to actually right away sign up uh, like for a session, I mean, they can also reach out to me. Uh, my email is k at ksanders.com. If they have any questions, if they want to discuss it further, I mean, they can always reach out to me. I'm on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, both k Sanders. It's uh, also just my name. Very easy to find. Okay, so, K, uh, what one business tip would you like to leave the audience with one business tip? Um, that would be work with a coach. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. And I'm not saying that because I want you guys to work with me. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I mean, if it's not me, find someone else. Uh, but you need to work with a coach. And 
be, but be careful when you work with someone. Really look for the qualities that you're looking for. Don't just sign up with someone just because you know they they're the shiny they're the shiny uh, experts online and they look all great. Really go by your feeling. Does it feel right to work with them? Do they really can they deliver what you're looking for? Um, but yeah, really go for it. Go find a mentor, find a coach because, uh, like I said, who are you not to go out there and make a difference in the world? But if you don't really know how to build a business, you're not going to be able to, or it's going to be a, it's going to be a very big struggle, and it's going to take you a lot longer to do that. And I mean, you, you're basically you're committing a crime by not going out there and working with people, or you know, doing what you what you're doing with your business. So really, go get the help. Find the help. Find the resources. Because Tony Robbins always says, "There's never a lack of resources. There's only a lack of resourcefulness." So I want to leave you with that. Wow. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed part two with Kay Sanders. And to reach her and connect with her, www.kaysanders.com. The website and her information will also be in the show notes for tonight's show. Make sure you go back and listen to part one so you can see how she ended up in part two. It wasn't an overnight process. It wasn't a flip of the switch. There's a backstory to this powerful front story. See, I told you guys part two was going to be awesome. Strategy to success with Kay Sanders. What a great show. With that being said, guys, as usual, I want you to think about one thing you learned in part two or part one that you can apply to your life starting right now. Since I didn't start with a quote, I'm going to go ahead and end with the quote. This comes from the wonderful actor whom I love since Titanic, Leonardo DiCaprio. Be thankful for the hard times, for they have made you. With that being said, class is over. See you soon. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers. Pizza. Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switched to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers. Pizza. Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switched to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions.